But joining me is one Liberal MP who, I hope, will still speak up, Tim Wilson. Tim, uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, why are you and your colleagues against raising the super levy to 12%? Well, Andrew, a lot of, thank you for having me on. And uh, I, I think what people want is just simply a discussion. Uh, we have the federal government uh, commissioning a review in the retirement income system, and we want a discussion around uh, the sustainability and the justification for continuing to increase the compulsory super contribution. And the Prime Minister, just for clarity this afternoon, has said uh, that, of course, it will be part of the conversation. Uh, so that's a great outcome for everybody. And the reason is simple. We're uh, pouring more and more money into superannuation each year. Analysis by the Grattan Institute of all people uh, has highlighted that most of the benefit is going to the rich. And some of us are saying for low-income earners or even for medium-income earners in particular, uh, it might make more sense that they have at least the choice to be able to take that money instead of taking it as more super is putting it towards their wages to be able to do things like pay down, uh, get more wages and pay down debt, particularly on their house. According to the Grattan Institute uh, uh, study, they were saying things like, well, the way it's structured, that a poor worker will then have a better standard of life when they're retired than they, are, they will have now, <laughs> which doesn't seem to make sense. So give them the money now. Is, is that how you see it, that perhaps that money might be better spent providing them with a, a home if they can afford, you know, buy one, uh, rather than put it off to the never-never? Well, that's right. And we already know young Australians in particular struggle towards uh, savings to be able to pay uh, to buy a home. Uh, the government's already introduced some measures around that to allow people to use their super to save to pay for a deposit, because we know that's the biggest challenge. Uh, but even then, a lot of people haven't necessarily paid off their home by the time they get to retirement and many people use their super balances uh, to pay off the remainder of their mortgage. And so enabling people to be able to increase their purchasing power now, to be able to pay off debt sooner, will actually probably put them in a better position uh, to, uh, than the alternative and the current trend, which is just to increase superannuation uh, with highly contestable um, benefits. In fact, there's been new research that came out only in the past couple of weeks, not just highlighted that the compulsory, uh, increasing the compulsory rate was mostly benefiting the rich, but actually most people were trending towards having enough to be able to, uh, to survive in retirement. Well, one thing, uh, someone who's benefiting from these, uh, these compulsory super levies are the funds themselves. I couldn't believe the Grattan Institute, I hope it's uh, right, the Grattan Institute... Uh, uh, suggesting the Australians are paying more than $30 billion a year in super fees. That doesn't seem uh, very yeah. healthy. No, no, it's not. And I mean, let's not be under any illusion. This goes across the entire sector. I mean, there are fees associated with SMSFs, uh, with, uh, with industry funds as well as retail funds. Uh, and we're well aware of that. Uh, but I think what we're concerned about, and, and I think Andrew Bragg did an exceptional job in his first speech yesterday in highlighting the country spends uh, more or just about more uh, on super fees every year as it does on the costs of energy. Now, if you think about that and the huge, the billions of dollars that go towards servicing this sector, I think a lot of us scratch our heads and wonder, considering the money compulsory already goes in, and for a lot of people it's not overly hard to manage, particularly when you've got these huge aggregate funds, where is this money going? Well, we, we, we could sp speculate very... Very profitably, I think, <laughs> uh, where it's going, Tim. I think director's well, fees are, might there's also... There's no doubt some people are profiting from it. <laughs> Absolutely, and not the workers. Um, should, as you say, this is an important discussion. Well, why is the government so sensitive about backbenchers discussing exactly this? Well, I think there's been a, a slight misrepresentation. I mean, what the Prime Minister is encouraged every backbencher to do is to channel their discussion through the official process if they want policy change. Uh, and, you know, obviously everybody, uh, the Prime Minister and the Executive, always want uh, all of the government to swim in the same direction. Uh, and all people have simply done is raise this as an issue, as a concern, uh, compound obviously by Mr Bragg's speech yesterday. Uh, and the Prime Minister has fully acknowledged it will be considered as part of the retirement income system review. And so uh, I don't think it need be um, a point where the, the perception is that, uh, as you outlined, is probably a little bit inaccurate. <laughs> well, there's still the missing Andrew Bragg. There you go. Well, Tim Wilson, I thank you for fronting. So thank you so much indeed.
Thank you, Andrew.